results. I'm excited for this matchup. If only Lil Man could see the camera from Noah with that belt over his shoulder as the kick is away inside Pizza Hut Stadium and it's going to be Lil Man starting with the ball first. Uh, let's remind players what these abilities are. Madden 20 all about the abilities TD and you got a little bit of a nasty streak with Lil Man. Lil Man is all about the offensive line abilities. He's got nasty streak with Colton Miller, secure protector. He also has another nasty streak, another secure protector here with that Brian O'Neill. So you're gonna just see power football. He's gonna be in that Oakland Raiders offensive playbook. I mean, it's just gonna be run formation, eye form, strong, and then on defense in that New York Jets. The question is, can he slow down Noah's run game? That's gonna be the thing in this, who has better defense? Yeah, both these guys, they had to have good pass defense in their first game, but they didn't have to deal with the run on the flip side with Noah. Again, we say it, two words, human joystick. Yeah, we talk about Noah's stick work, but when you add that human joystick to his arsenal, it makes him even da more dangerous. Then you got that Troy Polamalu with Lurker, but that secure tackler with Troy P as well is going to be super important in order to slow down Lil Man's run-heavy attack and also Noah in that Raiders offensive playbook. So it's kind of like a clone match on the offensive side of the ball, and he's also in that Green Bay Packers defensive playbook. We saw Noah in his first game against Schemen. That Troy Polamalu had a lurk, had a pick. He had a couple picks and a defensive touchdown. I got to see too many interceptions in this one as we head back inside Pizza Hut Stadium. Game number three. It's a battle of the one and O's. Noah and Lil Man. The vet versus the rook. This should be a good one, folks. Appreciate everybody out there on Twitch, YouTube, and in the ESPN app for hanging out all day long. And don't forget, we got plenty more coming today. And then Group D finishes out group play tomorrow. As on first down, it's Gale Sayers. And I hesitated a little bit because it looked like Sayers had a big old lane to the end zone. Oh boy, first play of the game. Looked like he could have broke one. You see those offensive tackles at receiver with those nasty streaks and the secure protector. And those secure protectors are going to be able to counter any uh, defensive abilities. Uh, no, it doesn't really have any to stop the run, so it kind of doesn't really matter. But as you see there, his run defense looks pretty solid. That's a nice stop on second down. Brings up a third and three early in this game. And we've seen these matchups of runners go a couple different ways. We've seen some high scoring big play games. and. And we've seen those games sort of stuck in the mud where the run defenses are the key as Sayers trying to find some room up the middle and Noah already yelling, shouting at his defense. Nice play. It's going to force a little man to punt. A quick three and out for Noah. That's exactly what he wanted. For little man, you know, you're very disappointed with that first drive. But like we said, this is going to be a low scoring defensive battle. We're going to see a lot of punts, I would expect, in this matchup. Both these guys uh, played pretty good run defense. Both guys known for their good defense, their stick work, and then running the ball on offense. So let's see what Noah does now on his first drive. As uh, in that stock defense to make sure he doesn't get fake punted on this punt inside the 15 yard line. It's going to roll down into the end zone, and that is. Where Noah will start with the ball. Ty, watching that second game, uh, while Josh and Skimbo were doing such a good job calling that one, it was, it was. I was impressed with how well Lil Man adjusted to what he was seeing. That second half defensive play was absolutely lights out. Well, that's all that experience. I mean, this guy in Little Man has done it all. Like I said, I've known Little Man for over 10 years. We've competed in tournaments all across the country, every city, you name it. I mean, this is a guy that used to travel with his grandfather, who he wanted to shout out. You know, his grandfather passed away a couple years ago, but his grandfather would come with him to every tournament all over the country. Little Man's won basically every tournament there is, all the underground tournaments. He's been on the big stage, but that one thing, he's come close. He came in second, uh, uh, lost to Skimbo in the Madden Classic last year. He's come so close, and, and I don't think people give him enough respect. I mean, this guy is arguably a top 10 Madden player of all time. I don't know if he's in, definitely in the top 10, but he's close to it, and I think he doesn't get enough respect, and he's looking to make a name for himself here in the Madden Bowl. I saw after that first game, Joe tweeted out, hashtag top 10 player. It's a handoff to Bo Jackson. By the way, you know, we talked to all these players before uh, the, the group play, getting to know them, getting some tidbits. Lil Man set the record for the most number of shout-outs of anybody. I mean, he wanted to shout-out, I think, every person he's ever met. <laughs> he mentioned Big Al Wilson. No idea who that guy is, but Big Al Wilson. If you're out there watching, man, your guy Justin wanted to support you, and I'm glad you tuned in supporting Lil Man. His big Al Wilson, his best friends Kyle and Alan Wilson with Mama Kathleen, his sisters, his brothers. I think he shouted out the ice cream man down the street who used to bring him his, 
Tasty Freeze when he was little. I mean, it was everybody getting a shout out from Lil Man as Bo Jackson takes up first and down. I asked Joke, I was like, you know, he and Lil Man are so close. I asked, what's it like being friends with Lil Man? And he says, he's the most loyal friend I've ever had. He could have $5 to his name. I could put 20000 next to him and never worry about him ever doing me wrong. He's the person who you hate to have as an enemy but love to have as a friend. And I think that's quintessential Lil Man. I think that last quote sums up Lil Man. You don't want him against you, but you want him on your side. He will support you to the end. Like, we see that with Joke. I mean, he's the biggest supporter of Joke. These guys are best friends outside of man. But like like user was saying, you know, Lil Man's pesky, man. He can be annoying, especially online. He'll talk his trash. But in person, Lil Man, one of the nicest guys I've ever met. He's always been super cool. And, and you know, I think he gets a bad rap online. But like I said, one of the best guys in the community. And, and so much passion and fire that he shows. And that's what you love to see. Yeah, luckily he, he's you know in the Madden community. No, nobody else talks trash online, right, Ty? Like it's it's a it's a quiet community, <laughs> nice and reserved. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Second to nine, Bo Jackson looking left side, trying to use that home, human joystick and find some room. He'll get seven, sets up a third and short. Yeah, third and short there, just a little halfback dive. Both these guys playing pretty solid run defense, not giving up any big plays. But the difference in this game could be that human joystick. Low man does not have that ability on offense, but Noah does. We saw, you know, in that first game versus Scheming, man. He had over 250 yards rushing. That human joystick is such a crucial ability when you're a run-heavy player. 17 years old from Ellicott City, Maryland. Madden Challenge champion gives it to Bo Jackson. This is what's scary to see from the defensive side. You notice Lil Man, that box is incredibly heavy. And if he's able to get past with Bo Jackson to that second level, there's just nobody back there. Yeah, definitely. That's the key. If you can get past that second level, you'll be off to the races. It's very scary, especially in this game, Madden 20, you know, the year of the runner. As we've seen, it's won three belts now, uh, all running. <laughs> so if you know, we know how overpowered it is. You got to have your run defense. You got to be very stout. Noah saying his keys for success are to stick to my game plan and stop bunch. He's not going to see a lot of bunch in this game against Little Man. First and ten, handoff. Ooh. Bo Jackson trying to find some room, okay. fighting forward. But Little Man, fast. he didn't have to do a whole lot of run defense against Clef. He's got something here as he's not making it easy on Noah. We know, though, it only takes one big play. And that Bo Jackson is going to put points on the board as we'll reach the end of one. Scoreless. TD, surprised how this first quarter went? No, not at all. I thought this was gonna, what it's going to be, you know, kind of a grind it out, run the ball, have to punt when you need to. Um, Noah's got a little more momentum here going. You know, he's moving the ball methodically, getting himself in manual situations. And let's see what he does here on the second and eight. Let's see him. Get out eye formation now. Bo Jackson, and we talk about if he gets to the second oh, level, you got to look out. And there Our goes Bo. On, he man, knows right where to go. That's to the end zone. And Noah's on the board oh, first. Got a battery. There goes Bo, and you see Bo swagging a little bit. Noah getting loud. Big touchdown run on that power row. 7 0 young Noah. Noah's offense was lights out. Now his room is lights out. He's playing in the dark, but he's got a 7 0 lead as the kick is away. Once again, deep in the end zone. And prime time, he's going to take it out. Little man says, I know I got prime time, and he's got some room left side. He's a the 40 yard uh, line, he's going to get great six, field yeah, position at the 48 oh yard line. No, Big play on the man. kickoff return, but let's take a look at our Snickers touchdown replay. Oh, Ty, it was Bo Jackson off to the races. Yeah, a little I-form close power Oh, Bo Jackson, too much speed all the way to the end zone. Easy touchdown for Noah. Bo Jackson, 1986 Heisman Trophy winner out of Auburn. Hit 141 career home runs in a long baseball career. And he has a home run in this one. Great field position to start for Lil Man. As he returned that with prime time to the 48-yard line. He's got that Gale Sayers dotting the eye. Motioning the tight end. And by tight end, we mean that's an offensive lineman. That's Armstead. On first and ten, it's Sayers trying to get outside. Nice tackle by Reed. Doesn't look like he got anything, even lost a yard. 
Yeah, Nick, that kick return was nasty. I'm over here screaming like a female for that kick return, but he did, he got to the 50, so Lil Man in great position now, staying in this eye form close. He's trying to get Noah out of alignment, going with the halfback oh, dive weak. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there goes Gallopin' Gale, and he's got himself a touchdown on the board. Lil Man says Bo knows where the end zone is. Well, Gale's on his way, too. Back and forth, here we go. Bo Jackson versus Gale Sayers. Lil Man with a huge response to tie this game up. Who needs running back abilities, Tyler, when you've got speed like Bo Jackson and Gale Sayers? Yeah, without a doubt. What a what a great what great two great runs by these guys to tie the game. Wow, what a way to start the game. Fireworks here with this running attack. Oh, strip. He's not aggressive. As he's to the 15-yard line. Take a look at this one more time. There's a nice cut to Sayers. Look at that block at the second level. Yeah, just a little halfback dive to the left side. He's got a lefty quarterback. And Gale Sayers, all that speed to the outside. Nice touchdown. Little man, fired up. That was nasty streak in full effect. An absolute crushing block at the second level. As Little man didn't, no look, scoring too, didn't look too fired up there. <laughs> No, I mean, listen, I, I asked him, I said, are you, you going to be as fired up as you are in person at the live event? He said, I'm going to try to keep it calm, cool, and collected. And we saw in that first game, it, it's really not possible for him. No, it's not. <laughs> but 7-7, seven, seven, nice run right there. Noah wanted more right there. He thought he could have broke that for a touchdown. But, man, neither of these guys, you know, that first drive looked like, okay, they got some decent run defense going. And ever since then, now <laughs> these guys can't even stop each other at all. Yeah, how about this? We had no scoring in the first five minutes of the game. That first quarter, 0-0. In the first 50 seconds of the second quarter, we put 14 points on the board. And I say we, I mean they did. I didn't do anything. 334 and counting, and Bo Jackson running left side and just running through defenders like they're nothing. Yeah, Bo just falling forward. Already over 100 yards rushing for Noah and that Bo Jackson. The attack is dominant right now, and you know we, we question coming into this tournament. You know, could Noah replicate what he did in the Madden Challenge with his running game? And boy, for through two games so far, it looks like he's doing the same exact thing. You know, talking with Noah, asking you know what would you attribute to your your really meteoric rise this year? He said he's just playing the game a lot more, especially early on in the year, learning some glitchy stuff. And he says that's what separates the good from elite. Those little tips and tricks are what made him a Madden Challenge champion. As he's going to find a first down there. It was a tough run for a first down. Tracy Porter bringing him down, but Bo Jackson stretching the ball out. And Nick, to your point, you know, to me, these guys have kind of similar paths. I mean, I know Little Man's 30 now, but 13 years ago, 12 years ago, when he came into the game, when he was the same age as Noah is now, he was, you know, he took down these big tournaments. He was playing anyone and everyone to get better. You know, there was money games. And you kind of see this, and they both have the same personality. I see a lot of similarities between these two guys. Yeah, yeah to that point, you know, we asked Little Man, what was... You know, what's your, what's your, do you have a favorite match, you know, in your long career? And he said that he, he looked back, then a young man named DeFuture knocked him out of Players Bowl 09. <laughs> said he was supposed to win that one. DeFuture knocked him out. Later changed his name to Clef the God. And he said he was trying to get his revenge 11 years later. And guess what? He did. Yeah, and look, the future turned into the now. I mean, what a crazy story that was. Clef was 12 years old. His family drove him down to Philadelphia for that tournament, and making the Final Four. You know, football kind of took over from there, and then now look at Clef. So that's a cool story, and Little Man able to get his revenge in that game. So that, definitely a cool story. And here we go. Noah sticking to the ground game. A big third and six coming up. Little Man needs to get off the field. You do wonder if Little Man was playing Lil Low Man at that point. At 12 years old, Clef going to Madden tournaments. Third and six. Can Noah pick up a first down as you saw on this drive, Noah utilizing that play clock, running it down under the two-minute warning. Eli Manning at the helm, a, not a high cap, Eli Manning. I believe only 11 cap for the former Ole Miss running Rebel. O'Shaughnessy in motion from right to left. As he'll hand this to Bo, right down the middle, fighting through tackles. He'll get near the first down marker. Low man takes a timeout, because it's a fourth and two. Dang. Big call for Noah. What's he going to do? Looks like he's going to go for it. Fourth and two here. Someone's got to step up. This is a huge momentum shift in the game. 
And it's a quick oh, snap. No. Can Jackson get there? He stood up That's at it. the line. Low man's defense That's makes it. a key play to That's give him the it. ball back with a buck 48 That's to go it. in the half. There you see the defense from Lil' Man. What a huge stop. And now he's in control. The defense stands up for the little guy. Lil' Man playing some big defense. First and 10, Sayers outside. He's got a first down and he'll get out of bounds. And you see oh, Noah able to finally lay one of those hit sticks with Ed Reed. Oh, yeah, down. great run right there. Gets touch the outside, down. but then there we go. We see that Noah hit stick, like you said. Like oh, we saw in the challenge, some of the best stick work. Uh, huge hit right there, but but low man in complete control now. Come on, come on. And you hear low man. I, I, it, it's interesting listening to him talk, especially at live events. About 50% of his capping is toward his opponent. About 50% is towards himself, trying to pump himself up, get a little energy in the room. Minute 43 to go. As Sayers, not gonna. You know who needs some energy right now, Noah, because he's got no lights. He's just playing in the dark. How how many times have you, Tyler Davis, played in the dark at two in the morning, grinding out your Madden game? Oh, thousands of times, staying up late when I was 16 years old, my family not knowing. They're thinking I'm waking up for school at 6 a.m., but it's 4 a.m., and I'm still on the game grinding those hours, trying to get to the glory, which these two guys are at right now on the grandest stage for the Madden Bowl. Second down and seven. Back into the I formation. He's in field goal range. Gale Sayers trying to find some room. And, you know, in these games with runners, Tyler, the, it, it a lot of times comes down to a, a field goal. It comes down to one possession because there just aren't that many possessions for each player. Yeah, without a doubt, you know, Madden 20 gets a lot of slack thrown at it about the game, things like that, people complaining. But look, there's a lot of strategy involved. There's a lot of art to being a good runner. I know that's not what people want to hear, but they're doing a lot of motions, a lot of audibling to get the defense aligned incorrectly. So there's a lot of thinking and strategy involved. I know it's not the prettiest, but it does take skill to be able to be a great runner at this level. Now a fourth and seven, Noah able to Whole low man from a big play, and he's going to get the ball with, you know, a little under a minute to go. As low man watching every single player on the left side of the line attempt to jump early and block that kick. It is up. It is good. 10 to 7. Low man takes the lead. Yeah, that's a good drive by Lil' Man. I know he wanted seven, but he used a lot of the clock. He got Noah to burn some timeouts. He's able to go up three heading into the half. So it was a good drive, taking the momentum, taking the lead. All it takes is one play for Bo Jackson. And we could be looking at a whole different ball game. 53 seconds left. I feel like, I feel like Noah's right now like really setting up the, the sultry mood in his room. He's got the belt next to him. He's feeling, I feel, I don't, dare I say, TD, he's feeling a little sexy about the game. <laughs> I don't know about all that, Nick, but... I mean, this is Stay one of the back. quietest Stay moments. Back. This is the quietest we've really seen Stay Noah back. right now. I don't know if he's if he doesn't feel comfortable, if he doesn't feel confident in what's going on. Clock ticking here. He's going to try to hurry up and run some more power rows. Stay back. Stay back. Stay back. Low man telling his defense stay to stay back. Trying to stay patient with that stay human back. joystick. Uh, the death is over pursuing. Once you over pursue, uh, you can wave goodbye. Is that clock down to 10 seconds? And try to stretch run left with Bo Jackson. Cuts back inside. Six seconds, five seconds remaining. And he's going to be comfortable taking this one to the half. I was going to call one timeout and maybe try to make a play. I mean, you never know with Bo Jackson. Yeah, Lil Man says he should have called timeout with seven seconds. I kind of agree. It would have forced Noah to possibly punt. Um, you know, so Noah's going to try for one more big play here. Yeah, there's the run outside, no time left. Trying to make a sticky play, and he'll lose 12 yards. Doesn't matter, though. We'll head to halftime. It's 10 to 7. Lil Man on top, and uh, Tyler, the difference in this game right now is Lil Man has one extra stop, uh, but Noah's going to get the ball to start the second half. That one stop, the difference in the game right now, even though he kicked that field goal, taking the lead, but Noah does get the ball. This game is still basically up in the air. Anyone's, uh, any, It's up for grabs for anyone. Let's see if Noah can get a drive going. Well, we've reached halftime here in game number three of Group C. It is Lil Man, the veteran, with a 10-7 score. Well, there's Noah. You see, he's got no lights in his room. Luckily, his mic was on. Let's listen in to our segment, Audible at Home. Get out of there, Boop! 
Come on, man! Bro, my light turned off. Car production. Come on, man, let's go! Come on, man, give me one more stop, man. Give me one more stop. Stop the run, let's have some fun, man. Come on. Guys, for those of you watching on Twitch, remember to keep yourself available for our Twitch drops. Make sure to link your EA account to your Twitch account so you can receive bonuses like a 95 overall Rob Gronkowski. Always great to have Gronk on your roster. Just ask the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The 95 overall Gronk is an exclusive Madden Bowl drop reward. Time here in Group C, and look at the remaining schedule. We got a couple great games coming up. Scheme and take it on Clef. Trying to avoid going 0-2 for both those players, and then the end of the game, at the end of the day, how about that? Clef the God and Noah. What a battle at the end. Speaking of Lil Man, by the way, what a, he's 1-0, uh, up 10-7 in this game. The second oldest competitor in the group, and we've seen these first two games tie. His veteran presence is what's leading him to some leads. Without a doubt, Lil Man's been in so many big games, like we said. You know, it's really phenomenal to see older guys be able to still play. Boogs, you know, has a family. Lil Man, you kind of, you know, you lose your stick skills a little bit, but Lil Man, it hasn't lost a step. Still one of the best players in the world. Ten minutes of game time remain in this game three. Both of these players in Group C sitting there at 1-0. and oh. And right now, Lil Man with a slight edge. Noah, an opportunity as he gets the ball to start the second half. First down and 10, Bo Jackson, right side. How about the defense so far from Lil Man? Apart from the one long run, it's been tough going for Bo. Real tough for Bo, and Noah switching it up there, going to a single back big, single back ace type of look, going with a little stretch, you know, trying to do something different because Lil Man's played great run defense. And it's kind of a grinded out game. Looks like Noah's still gonna use some of his clock. That's how he wants to keep the game, low scoring, Get it, keep it like a one possession game going into the fourth. Second down and 10. I love watching Noah come out and when he goes to his audibles and flashes up a pass play. Get, get a little excited, like, is he going to actually air this out? Uh, but unfortunately, when you've got two linemen playing wide receiver, I mean, what exactly are their catch ratings? <laughs> Gotta be under 20 at least, right? I mean, you would think. <laughs> I feel, I feel like I feel like some of these legendary offensive linemen would have a little something to say to the development team if their catch rate was that low. They're like, hold on, man, I got some hands out here. They're down in five. Let's go! Looking left side, Come and on. once again, little man. Brian Shea's here, the former Pittsburgh Steeler in the backfield. Low man is on his neck in the backfield, blowing everything up. Ryan Shazier right there, and Noah's forced to punt. Low man, just terrific defense all day so far. Ryan Chase here finishes his career with 299 career tackles. Such a devastating injury, but man, when he was playing, he's one of the top middle linebackers in the game. Has Lattimore with care. The interesting thing I'm, I'm seeing in this game so far, TD, is these guys are kicking the ball sort of right down the middle and allowing each of them to return kicks. Seems like that's a part of the strategy because there's no kick return formation out there. They just kind of have the quarter three deeps with their secondary, so they're just punting it down the middle. But Lil Man, now he had a great kick return earlier in the game. Now he has a nice punt return, and he's in great field position moving forward here with the lead. 10-7. Here in game number three. It's back to the Gale Sayers show. It's Gale versus Bo, one on one. And there goes Gale. And Gale Sayers is going to find himself with another touchdown. How about Lil Man's performance here in game number three? This isn't Sesame Street. This is the Madden Bowl. But Elmo is showing up and showing out. Wow, what a run by Lil Man. Sit composed. Sit composed, baby. It ain't over. It ain't over. Got the ball back. I feel like back. he could get stay composed Gotta tattooed on his back. arm and it would help him in his entire career. Gotta Just look down back. at that bad boy. 17 to 7. Big stay play. Composed. It was a set up by a nice punt return and it was one cut from Gale Sayers. Just a nice stretch. One cut up the middle. Gale Sayers, what we've seen all day to the end zone and little man swagging on him. Uh, Ty, I mean, listen, it's still early. We're still in group play. We're still early in this game, relatively in the third quarter.
But through these first, what, six, six and a half quarters, I mean, is Lil Man establishing himself as someone that could be a favorite here at the Madden Bowl? Yeah, I mean, I, that's what I said. People weren't res putting respect on Lil Man's name. This guy's done it all. And coming into Group C, I think he was probably third, maybe even fourth uh, favorite in this oh, group. I think. Oh, 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 oh. Just, uh, Balls out! Let's and Marshawn Lattimore scoops it up! Lil Man. Man saying no, you had the hit Get stick at the challenge, but I got one here at the ball. Lil Man saying anything you can do, Noah, I can do better. What a hit, what a fumble. Lil Man blowing it open now. Unbelievable. That was a grown man hit in the middle. And that's why Bo put it on the ground. Sayers outside trying to run past Troy P. He'll pick up a first down. Low man's building time, confidence. Tick -tock. Tick -tock. Listen, the thing about Low Tick man, tock, he's not always the most confident guy, but when he gains Tick his tock. confidence, when he gets some momentum tock, like this, he is a Tick scary tock. guy to face. You do not want to see Low man playing like this on, with baby. that swagger going on in this Tick tournament. Tock, I think Lil Man is trying to creep in on Drini's TikTok game. I'm not sure. He's yelling it a lot. Which way am I gonna go, Noah? First and ten. Which way am I gonna go, Noah? Is this clock running down? And no, it needs to hold Lil Man to three here to stay in this ball game. You don't want to go down by three scores. Clock bleeding. As we're nearing that two-minute warning, handoff. Sayers cutting That's right it. side this time. Oh boy, he had a lane and he ran into his own blocker. Yep, he had the outside yes, wide open. Bad it. stick work right there that's by Lil Man. It, but now if you're Lil Man, you just want to you want to hike at one on the play clock every play from here on out now. You want to get out of this third quarter. Another first down will do that. And you and even if you got to kick a field goal, you're just trying to get out of the third quarter, stay up two possessions. Lil Man says he's always been a balanced player, but for this tournament, he's taken a leak of leap of faith and stocking up big on defense. And so far, it's been his calling card as he was able to really lock down Clef the God in the second half of his first game, and he's logging out Noah right now with that 10-point lead. The veteran presence, utilizing as much clock as he can. Second and nine, tries it up the middle, he'll pick up two. Yeah, just a little inside zone dive right there, and Noah now, this is a big play in the game. Noah has to hold him to three. A touchdown will put Lil Man up 17. You cannot have that if you're Noah. This is a, a do or die play in a sense. You gotta get off the field, keep it two possessions. It's crazy, we haven't seen Noah this quiet in a long time, mostly because as people were sort of getting to know him in the challenge, it was when he made it out of groups and didn't lose a game the rest of the tournament. Won his first game here, but you see the demeanor has changed just enough. Even with those lights on. Clock down near that 40 second mark. Low man using every bit of time he can. It's Gail Sayers trying to get outside. And no with a nice defense, defensive play. This is a big stop just to stay down by two scores. Yeah, and if you're a little man there, you would have liked to get another one or two seconds off the clock. Now you're going to be forced, most likely, I believe, to kick your field goal before the end of the third. So kind of an unfortunate play for little man there. Noah definitely still alive in this game. Uh, plenty of time, five minutes. I know his offense, you know, is not built for that, these type of moments. But if he can break one off, he's definitely still alive in this ballgame. He will have to kick this before the fourth quarter. About a half second difference or so between the play clock and the game clock snap kick is up and it is good 20 to 7 the veteran low man with the lead but one second stays on the clock as noah has an opportunity to return this one yeah 20 to 7 impressive impressive by low man offense and defense doing just enough and running that clock perfectly only five minutes left in this one, but it is all Lil Man right now. He's trying to tell himself, settle down. There's still plenty of game left. Can Noah get Bo Jackson rolling? 20 to seven. It's time to head to the fourth quarter. Presented by Creamy Snickers. You're not smooth when you're hungry. Oh, no, no, don't try to this party's garbage. That bad, huh? It is that bad. It's like a bag of zero. zero. Try this creamy Snickers. You can use a little smoothness. Is that one of the zeros? Get smooth with the fresh ground nut butters and creamy Snickers. Lil Man's hoping to put more zeros on the board defensively. Noah's hoping Bo Jackson's got something in the tank. At the start of the fourth quarter, 20 
to seven. And uh, Tini, you know, some people may see this surprising, but as you've mentioned, Lil Man is a veteran, and I think a lot of people were sleeping on his preparation coming into the Madden Bowl. Without a doubt, and you know, for me, maybe just because I'm more of an older head, I would have Little Man as the favorite, but I know Noah winning that belt, winning the last tournament, uh, a lot of people's eyes would see him as the favorite, but to me, I think it was a very equal matchup, and Little Man just dominating so far. Five minutes left in this one. Big shout out once again to everybody on Twitch, YouTube, and the ESPN app. I was going to hang out with some of those guys in the Twitch chat, and y'all are awesome. Y'all are fired up for this Group C is timeout taken. Little man didn't like his defensive setup coming out of the quarter. I know as a, as a football fan, when you see that happen in real life, when you're watching your favorite team, they use a timeout at the beginning of the half time. I hate that. I hate seeing wasting timeouts. <laughs> yeah, you never want to waste those timeouts, but you can't take them with you. Little man up two possessions. I don't think it was the worst call. You want to get comfortable and a great defense again right here. Unfortunately, as a Browns fan, I've seen Way too many wasted timeouts. 20 to seven as Bo Jackson only get one on the play. Man, this defense from Lil Man has been swarming from the beginning, utilizing that Taylor Mays secured tackler in the middle of the defense. Second and nine. It's gonna be Bo Jackson trying to find his room. Ooh, he almost broke through. He'll pick up six. And how scary is Lil Man knowing that he not only has a pass defense that can contain Clef, but he's got a run defense that's containing Noah. Low man, very versatile. You know, you know he's been in the lab with Joke, who we always talk about as one of the top five players. Always kind of, you know, Low man kind of runs the stuff Joke does and, and is very effective with it. But now he's in that three, four. So Low man switching formations. He's not just staying in one formation. That's the key too. You know, some whatever he's seen on offense, he's he's a, he's countering and he's adjusting to it. So he's been in the three, three, five uh, wide run defense. He's been in three, four. Then like you said, where we saw versus Clef, you know, he made phenomenal adjustments running that match defense. Yeah, he said that as Noah running with Bo Jackson will pick up a couple. He said, you know, Joke means a lot to him because, you know, without him, he wouldn't have the adjustments he has, the 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 game plan coming in. Uh, and he says he's helped me be as good as him on defense. And that's high praise because we have seen how dominant Joke is defensively. Yeah, without a doubt. And like we've talked about before, that EMB crew, they are like a family. They, those guys help each other out with everything. And a nice tackle right there. Bo almost got loose again. It's a little scary out there, but Low Man able to click on and make a nice tackle. How about Denzel Ward down there in the trenches, fighting through and able to bring down Bo Jackson? I bet you Bo Jackson's watching this one going, wait a second, Denzel Ward one on one just brought me down. Hold on, guys, we got to fix that. Third and five. Stretch run, left side, trying to get outside, looking for the Go strip. For Go for he's going to lose Go a yard, and he's going to be Go facing a fourth and six. This could be Go the ball game. Go for it. Yeah, interesting Go to see what it. Noah's going to do here. you get got to kind of Go, Go for, for this. I mean, two minutes to go. Go for it. Uh, I mean, if you don't get it, you, you lose. Go but, for it. Uh, Give me more I mean, if you punt, Give me more it's going to be very difficult to ever get the ball back and, and get two touchdowns. Uh, Titi, look how much yeah, time he's right. using. He's spent almost fun. 20 seconds now picking his fun. play, and he's coming out in the punt formation. Yeah, wasting a lot of time, not sure what he wants to do. I, I'm, I can't believe he's actually going to punt. I feel like you just got to kind of go for it at this point, but he is going to punt. He's still got his three timeouts. He's going to try to hold him, get the ball back. I, I mean, again, I'm sure there are a lot of armchair quarterbacks in the chat questioning this one. I'm questioning it myself because I'm looking at two scores. You know Lil Man's using as much clock as he can, so best case scenario, if you use all your timeouts or at least get the two-minute warning, I mean, you still got to put two touchdowns on the board, and you haven't been able to put up a touchdown since the first quarter. As Sayers will already pick up a first down, that's key. Yeah, that'll pretty much do it right there. You, you know it had no answer for this offensive line. Those big boys up front with the secure protector as well as the uh, nasty streak, just dominating for Lil Man. And, and that'll and let's, I want to see now if Lil Man tries to go for more points. And this was a big game, and I think you see the excitement from Lil Man now because he knows he's guaranteed himself a spot at least in the wild card round, going two and zero. He he might not get the bye. That's still up for debate and up for play. But he did get guarantee, guarantee himself that he's going to advance in the tournament, and that's huge for his confidence. Sayers outside, picks up six. Man, you saw just a little bit of a smile from Lil Man. Always incredibly stoic as 
You know, Noah's won five in a row all the way back to the challenge. His last loss, remember, he went one and two in group play, lost to JD. That was the last time he lost here on the competitive stage. Second and three, and there goes Gale. Is Low Man going to put another seven on the board? He's going to get to the 10 yard line. He's looking for the kill shot. Yeah, Gale Sayers has been exceptional for Low Man, and he wants more. He wants more points for this group play. Wow, what a run right there by Gale. Too much speed out there, man. Just getting in the open space and Noah very upset with what with his performance in this game. He's got his mom and dad in the house, and you know he's gonna be you know, taking a little breather. Go go sit with the parents, digest this loss and get prepped. He'll be sitting there at one and one and all, all of a sudden, our next game, Schemen versus Clef, becomes very, very interesting. It was already interesting, but think about what happens. If in that game, Schemen's able to pull off the win, or Clef the God, either way, you're sitting there with two guys at 1-1, one one, a guy at 0-2, a guy at 2-0, and, oh, and we've seen already in Group A, depending on how those games go, we could end up with ties all over the place. Oh man, once those once these first three games are played, it gets so interesting. There's always all types of scenarios. Oh man, it's gonna get down to the wire, it's gonna get crazy. And don't forget, Noah's gotta wrap his head around a rematch of the Madden Challenge final with Clef the God in our final games of the day. So he's gonna have to shake this one off. Sayers outside. Does Lil Man have another seven? I hit him with the stop and go. He threw on the brakes and found the end zone. Little man waving goodbye to the camera, saying goodbye to Noah. Little man gonna go two and zero, oh, and he's gonna go for two to add more. The disrespect right here. You hate to have him as an enemy. You love to have him as a friend. The words out of Joke's mouth. Two point conversion. He'll give it to Sayers, fighting forward, but he'll get stopped in the line. Yeah, went with the dive. Looked like he might have been able to fall forward, but Noah, with good defense, holds him. And now, oh man, that's a tough touchdown to give up if you're Noah. Now you're going to lose by 19 points, unless you can kind of get something going, break a big run, but that's a tough way to go down. 19 points is going to be huge in the point differential. Well, if you had Lil Man at 2-0, and I think... I would be surprised. Look at this just little hesitation. That is a play we saw during the challenge, Tyler, that he would that Noah would have laid the hit stick there. But Lil Man with a little kiss to the camera knows that he just sealed himself a huge victory. Yeah, just a little stick work with that stop and go. Noah gonna try to break this on the toss. Oh! And he is! Oh, wow, he hit him nice with the human work. joystick! Oh, he hit him with the human joystick! It says you went for two! I'm gonna put six back on you, Lil Man! Cut into that point differential! Nasty stick work by Noah, and that could be a big touchdown later on when it comes to these point differentials. If he didn't get that in the last play of the game, it could have cost him and eliminated him from the tournament, but he has a chance now, and that was a huge run to add to his point differential.